tell you that because we're here 31 days before an election. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Your phone's going to start ringing. It's going to ring from the party. It's going to ring from candidates. They're going to ask you questions like, will you give? Will you come work at telephone? Will you walk door to door this weekend? And right now, all of you are sitting there thinking, of all the things you've got to do. You see, the American people are great. We're always for something until we find out today. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not quite ready. I need to prepare you today for when that phone call comes that you don't wait for what the question is. Say yes. You know it's somebody calling, asking you to be involved in some way, shape, or form in changing the direction of the country. Don't try to find a reason as to why today's not the time. Because I'm going to tell you, there's no election cycle more important than the one we're going to have on November the 2nd. What's at stake is the future of this country for our children and our grandchildren. Now I got to tell you, I, I look around the room and I can confidently say this. We've made the bed most of us in this room are going to sleep in. We're not going to change the life that's ahead of us too much. But we can surely change it for our children and our grandchildren. We can let them inherit from us the same opportunity, if not a better one, than we got from our parents. I saw the hands of veterans go up around the room. Over 50% of this room has sacrificed so that we could be here today. So this November the 2nd, we, with confidence, know that we can go and cast our vote for our leadership, local, state, and federal. And the reason that so many of you responded to your country's request is you wanted to protect that special democracy in the world, the United States of America. I think the same thing's at stake in, in this election cycle. You know, I've gone from one end of this state to the other. And the one common thread that you find, and it's not just in North Carolina, it's around the country. See, the average American goes to bed scared at night, scared about what tomorrow holds. It's just not all limited to our job security. It truly is about whether the same America we have had the privilege to participate in is the same America that our children are going to enjoy. We can't let the sacrifices of all of you who raised your hand go up in smoke because we didn't do enough to save this country. You know, I've got a bracelet on my arm of a young soldier that I never had the opportunity to meet. His dad, one Memorial Day, came up and removed his KIA bracelet of his son off his wrist and he put it on mine. And he said, Senator, you're my only hope. You're my only hope to make sure that my son's sacrifice was not in vain. And he really wasn't talking about win the war in Iraq or win the war in Afghanistan or eventually make sure that terrorism in here. It's about winning the war here at home. The battle over the direction that this country is going. You know just as well as I do. A country $14 trillion in debt does not have a pretty future. A country that owes $5 trillion in interest payments over the next 10 years is not one that's going to go out and have a healthy economy if, in fact, we don't turn it around. Nothing pains me more over the last two years than to see the number of Americans that have been unemployed, dislocated from their careers struggling to meet the end of the month bills, trying to come up with the money to pay the next semester of tuition for their kids. Those that have sacrificed everything to try to get by. Yet in Washington, I'm amazed at the lack of urgency that I've seen from some of my colleagues and from the administration about doing things that will actually have a positive impact on re-employing the American people. They're too intent on driving down a path, a direction that's really inconsistent with the free marketplace, with capitalism. 
You know, this country didn't become great because of what government did. It became great because of what the American people did. Hard-working Americans. Americans that took risk. There's, there's no certainty when a small business owner opens a new store, but there's plenty of opportunity. Limit the American people's ability to succeed. Limit the size of the reward and a predictable thing will happen. You'll limit the amount of risk that the American people are willing to take. Eliminate the ability to invest your money in a business or in, a, in, in, in an idea and you will limit the amount of private capital that's there to create jobs and fuel economic growth. This is not something we haven't seen before. It's things that, it's a direction that quite honestly we've been warned about by people who came along before us. I tell you, the reason we are the United States of America was over taxes. Our founding fathers would probably be turning in the grave right now if they believed that that limited government that they created that didn't even have the ability originally to tax had grown into quite the consumption of our money and the size that scared them enough to make sure they controlled it in that document we call the Constitution. This is a real opportunity. It's a real opportunity on November the 2nd to for the first time since 1898 have Republicans in charge of the North Carolina House and the North Carolina Senate. Over 100 years it's never happened. But in 2010 to November, we can do that. And when the Census Bureau is all settled and we go to draw those new lines, it'll be drawn with constituents in mind and not with politicians' re-elections in mind. What a novel approach. But what's so long overdue in this state and many others. I want to take just a personal minute to talk about these two. And Sanford Steelman was with us up till the last stop. And uh, you might look at the sheet and you see Sanford Steelman, nobody's running against him. He's running unopposed. But for four stops today, Sanford Steelman's been in the van with us going around North Carolina talking about the importance of the judiciary and why we need to do everything we can to educate people who are gonna vote on November 2nd about these judges. And yeah, there's not an R, an I, or a D behind their name, but there's a huge difference between a conservative judge and a liberal judge. And we wanna make sure that we put conservative judges on the bench. These two, <laughs> these two judges are a great example of it. Two individuals that I have campaigned before from one end of the state to the other and will for the next 31 days to make sure that they're, that Anne Marie Calabria is reelected to the North Carolina Court of Appeals and that Barbara Jackson is our next justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court. <laughs> and somehow I feel a little bit responsible for the 13 candidates that are running for the other Court of Appeals seat because it was Judge Wynn's move from the Court of Appeals to the Fourth Circuit Court that all of a sudden opened up that opening. And we have a tremendous opportunity to send Judge Steelman, Judge Calabria, help on that appellate court by making sure we replace Judge Wynn with a conservative judge from the list that you see. This is not something that people are going to pick up on election day as they walk into the ballot box. They're not going to go in and see a name that automatically associates with somebody that they've heard a lot about. The best way to make sure these judges get elected is to make sure we do our part in the next 31 days to make sure that their names are household names, that people associate Jackson and Calabria with conservative judges 
people who deserve our vote and more importantly deserve our trust on the bench. If you'll help us do that, I'm confident that we will have a slate elected that we're proud of in North Carolina, but we'll also we'll have judges on the bench that rule just like we would like to see those judgments made. Last thing I'm going to say to you, thank you. You don't have to be here on a Saturday afternoon, I realize that. Uh, you don't have to be involved in the process, regardless of whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or Independent here today. But I've got to plead with you. We need help. We need help in Washington. Nancy Pelosi said when she became Speaker, if she could be in control, she would drain the swamp. Let me tell you, it's only one person that can drain the swamp. The American people are the only ones that can do it. <laughs> to me, the movement, whether you want to call it Tea Party or whether you want to call it Americans for Prosperity, whatever label you want to put, it's like the cavalry coming to me. It's a sign that the American people have woken up, that they're engaged, that they said enough is enough, no more. Well, I gotta tell you, as a member of the United States Senate, but more importantly as a North Carolinian and as American, thank God it has happened. It's out of control. And in my own selfish way, I've gotta tell you, I've got a 26 and an almost 25 year old. What's best for them is best for your children and your grandchildren. It is absolutely crucial that we do everything we can for the next 31 days to make sure that we maximize the possibilities that this election provides us. If my wife were here, she'd have a bumper sticker up here. And she'd tell you, that bumper sticker is worth $250 on your car. And if you've got a truck, it's worth 500 bucks. <laughs> but it's, it's really the thing we don't think about that's most important about that bumper sticker. It's the number of people that when they see it, realize they're not the only ones that go to bed scared at night. They're not the only ones that are trying to find folks that are willing to stand up and say enough is enough. No, we've got to stop this insane spending. There's an army of people out there that you could fill more than the fun house today. And we've got to reach out and touch them and make them understand that the majority of Americans are thinking just like they are. And we've got to invite them to be part of what I think is going to be a huge shift in the direction of this country. The results of the work you do and the votes you cast on November 2nd. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and more importantly, to represent you in the United States Senate. God bless you.